The Salamaule campaign was a series of actions in the New Guinea campaign of World War II. Australian and United States forces sought to capture two major Japanese bases, one in the town of Leh, and another one at Salamaua. The campaign to take the Salamaua and Leh area began with the Australian attack on Japanese positions near Mubo, on the 22nd of April 1943. The campaign ended with the fall of Leh on 16 September 1943. Background during 1942, the Japanese established major bases on the north coast of New Guinea, in the large town of Leh, and in Salamaua, a small administrative town and port 35 kilometers to the south. Salamaua was a staging post for attacks on Port Moresby, such as the Kokoda Track Campaign. When the attacks failed, the Japanese turned the port into a major supply base. Logistical limitations meant that the Salamaua Lay area could garrison only 10,000 Japanese personnel, 2,500 seamen and 7,500 soldiers. The defences were centred on the Okaba Detachment, a brigade-sized force from the 51st Division under Major General Toru Okaba. In January 1943, the Okaba Detachment was defeated in an attack on the Australian base of war, about 40 kilometres away. Allied commanders turned their attention to Salamaua, which could be attacked by troops flown into war. This also diverted attention from Leh, which was a major objective of Operation Cartwheel, the Allied grand strategy for the South Pacific. It was decided that the Japanese would be pursued towards Salamaua by the Australian 3rd Division, which had been formed at war, under the command of Major General Stanley Savage. Salamaua between the 22nd of April and the 29th of May 1943, the Australian 2, 7th Infantry Battalion, at the end of a long and tenuous supply line, attacked the southern extremity of Japanese lines, the Mubo area, at features known to the Allies as the Pimple and Green Hill. While the 2, 7th made little progress, they provided a diversion for the 2, 3rd Independent Company, which advanced in an arc in raid Japanese positions at Bob Tubi Ridge, inflicting severe losses. In May, the 2 7th repelled a number of strong Japanese counterattacks. At the same time as the first battle at Mubo, the Australian 24th Infantry Battalion attacked the near southwest of Salamaua, in the Bob Tubi Range, between the 22nd of April and the 29th of May. This allowed other units to secure the crossing over the Francisco River, on the track to Salamaua. The Japanese 18th Army Commander, Lieutenant General Haters Oadachi, sent the 66th Regiment from Finchafen to reinforce the Okaba detachment and launch an offensive. The 1,500-strong 66th attacked at Lababia Ridge, on 20-23 June. The battle has been described as one of the Australian Army's classic engagements of World War II. The ridge's only defenders were D Company of the 2, 6th Battalion. The Australians relied on well-established and linked defensive positions, featuring extensive cleared free-fire zones. These assets and the determination of D Company defeated the Japanese envelopment tactics. Between 30 June and 19 August, the Australian 15th Infantry Brigade cleared Bob Jibby Ridge. The operation was opened with an assault by the inexperienced 58, 59th Infantry Battalion, and included hand-to-hand -hand combat. At the same time as the second Australian assault on Bob Jibby, on 30 June 4 July, the U.S. 162nd Regimental Combat Team made an unopposed amphibious landing at Nassau Bay and established a beachhead there. A week after the Bob Jibby attack on Nassau Bay landing, the Australian 17th Brigade launched another assault on Japanese positions at Mubo. With the Allies making ground closer to Salamaua, the Japanese withdrew to avoid encirclement. Meanwhile, the main body of the 162nd RCT followed a flanking route along the coast, before encountering fierce resistance at Roosevelt Ridge, named after its commander, Lieutenant Colonel Archibald Roosevelt, between 21 July and 14 August. 
between the 16th of July and the 19th of August, the 42nd and 2 5th Infantry Battalions gained a foothold on Mount Tambu. They held on despite fierce Japanese counter-attacks. The battle turned when they were assisted by the 162nd RCT. On 23 August, Savage and the 3rd Division handed over the Salamour operation to the Australian 5th Division under Major General Edward Milford. After Allied landings near Ley in the first week of September, Japanese forces withdrew to the north, and the 5th Division occupied Salamour on the 11th of September. Operation Poston The code name for the main operations to take Ley was Operation Poston. This was a classic pincer movement, involving an amphibious assault east of the town, and an airborne landing near Nadzab, 50 kilometres to the west. Lay on 4 September, the Australian 9th Division, under Major General George Wooten, landed east of Lay, on Red Beach, and Yellow Beach, near Malahang beginning an attempt to encircle Japanese forces in the town. Five U.S. Navy destroyers provided artillery support. The landings were not opposed by land forces but were attacked by Japanese bombers, who killed about 100 Allied naval and army personnel. The 9th Division faced formidable natural barriers in the form of rivers swollen by recent rain. They came to a halt at the Busu River, which could not be bridged for two reasons. The 9th lacked heavy equipment, and the far bank was occupied by Japanese soldiers. On 9 September, the 2 28th Infantry Battalion led an attack and secured a bridgehead after fierce fighting. Nadzab the following day, the U.S. 503rd Parachute Infantry Regiment, together with two gun crews from the Australian 2 4th Field Regiment, who had received a crash course in the use of parachutes, and their cut-down 25-pounder artillery pieces made an unopposed parachute drop at Nadzab, just west of Ley. The airborne forces secured Nadzab airfield, so that the Australian 7th Division, under Major General George Vasey, could be flown in, to cut off any possible Japanese retreat into the Markham Valley. The 7th Division suffered its worst casualties of the campaign on 7 September, as they were boarding planes at Port Moresby. OB-24 Liberator bomber crashed while taking off, hitting five trucks carrying members of the 2 33rd Infantry Battalion. 60 died and 92 were injured. On the 11th of September, the 7th Division's 25th Infantry Brigade engaged about 200 Japanese soldiers entrenched at Jensen's plantation in a firefight. At a range of 30 meters, with the 2 24th Field Regiment providing artillery support. After defeating them and killing 33 enemy soldiers, the 25th Infantry Brigade engaged and defeated a larger Japanese force at Heath's Plantation, killing 312 Japanese soldiers. It was at Heath's Plantation that Private Richard Kelleher won the Victoria Cross, the highest award for gallantry in the British Commonwealth. The 25th Infantry Brigade entered Ley on 15 September, just before the 9th Division's 24th Infantry Brigade. The two units linked up that day. Aftermath While the fall of Ley was clearly a victory for the Allies, and it was achieved more quickly and at lower cost than anticipated, a significant proportion of the Japanese garrison had escaped through the Saru Wage Range, to the north of Ley and would have to be fought again elsewhere. The Huon Peninsula campaign was the result. Salamaua was not developed as a base. The Australian First Corps commander, LT Gen, Sir Edmund Herring, visited Salamaua by PT boat on 14 September 1943, three days after its capture, and found little more than bomb craters and corrugated iron. He recommended cancelling the development of Salamaua and concentrating all available resources on Ley. The base that had originally been envisaged now looked like a waste of effort, because Salamaua was a poor site for a port or air base. However, in drawing the Japanese attention away from Ley at a critical time, the assault on Salamaua had already served its purpose. Ley was transformed into two bases the Australian lay base sub-area and the U.S. 
B.C. Herring combined the two as the Lay Fortress, under Milford, because General Thomas Blamey, as commander of the Allied New Guinea force, had launched Poston before the logistical preparations were complete. Most of the units needed to operate the base were not yet available. The importance of Ley as a port was to supply the air base at Nadzab. But this was compromised because the Markham Valley Road was found to be in poor condition. In order to expedite the development of Nadzab, minimal efforts were made to repair it, and heavy military traffic bound for Nadzab was permitted to use it. The road was closed following heavy rains on 7 October and did not reopen until December. Until then, Nadzab had to be supplied by air, and its development was slow because heavy engineer units could not get through.